So hello and welcome again in this BARC Real Previous Interview Question Series. So this series is very special because nowhere in the internet or almost very rarely in the internet you can find the answers of the real BARC Previous Interview Questions. I have already published two videos uh, before this one. So now I will be directly starting today's topic and this is I can I think that you can see the screen of my iPad. So the subject is the strength of material today. I think you are excited. Now, the most exciting thing is that I don't know that whether you guys will believe me or not. I have not solved this question before. So this will be a really live experience because I will be like, like consider me as your interview aspirant and I will be solving in front of you from scratch. I haven't tried this problem before. Okay. So now the problem says that we have a beam here. We have a beam here, the Young's modulus, the I, that is the moment of uh, inertia of the, I mean, uh, CS, that is the cross section that is given and the length is L, clear? Now, generally in our gate type questions or in our semester or the conventional questions, we get the load like this P. Now here we have a pendulum that is swinging like this. A pendulum that is swinging like this. Now here you have to design the beam. Now this is a very beautiful problem and it is an open-ended one. Okay. You have not been told that by which theory you will uh, design this and all. Okay. So this problem doesn't have any proof or any hard and fast answer you have to think by yourself and you have to go by your logic okay so that is the thing that they will see okay they will not see that if this guy is uh, telling all the answers I mean correctly or not they will see that if this person is thinking in the right direction or not that is it so let us uh, start obviously this is a bean then we have to find the bending moments, that is clear. Now here, the load is acting at the end, the load is acting at the end, but the direction of the load as well as the magnitude of the loads will change, okay, how it will change. So now let me draw the schematic, okay, of the beam. So this is our beam, clear, and the load is something like this that if I draw a vertical line so this vertical line signifies just a vertical axis okay so I will make it dotted okay so the load at any instant will make an angle of maybe if this is the angle omega t okay or if, if this is the angle theta okay now what is the omega omega is the frequency of the swinging okay Omega is the frequency of this thing. So if this is omega t, the angle. Now this is the direction of load, and this is m. Okay, this I mean this is f. Okay. Now you have to find. You have to find the value of the f also. And what will be the value of the f? You have to ask them. Sir, can I take this rod as massless? If they say yes, that this rod is massless, and this ball, this pendulum head is having a mass m, then this f will be m omega square r. And what is this r? We have to assume it that this r is this length. Okay. This r is this length. Clear? m omega square r. Now, this is the thing. So, you see that the load is changing with time. And the load is actually oscillating. Now, at any instant, what we can have now, we are not familiar, I mean, familiar, we are not familiarized with this kind of loading, with angular loading. We are familiarized with this kind of loading that is called a transverse loading. Okay, so that will be F cos theta, where this theta is omega t, and the longitudinal loading. Okay, that is F sin theta. Okay, so now if I have the 
cross sectional area as A. So, this is my cross sectional area. Then I can have a stress like sigma tensile that will be equal to F sine theta by A. And I will have my bending stress. Okay. So, how can I have my bending stress? First of all, if you want to design the beam, you have to find the uh, critical section. And what will be the uh, critical section? The critical section will be this one. Okay. Why? Why this one? Because if you draw the bending moment diagram, then the bending moment diagram will be maximum where? Will be maximum here. I mean, you, they will ask you obviously to draw the bending moment diagram and I'm sure that all of you can draw it easily. How can you draw it? So, if this is the x direction, this is the bending moment axis. How can you draw it? So, first of all, at this end, there is there will be the external moment like this and the value will be f cos theta into L. L is the length of the beam, right? And after that, it will decrease, it will decrease. So, it is a, this kind of moment. So, it will be a, a, a positive moment. After that, it will decrease. And how it will decrease? Because there will be a upward uh, reaction force and that upward reaction force will be F cos theta, right, at this point. So, the, the equation will be F cos theta L minus f cos theta into x, right? So, it will be something like this. Clear? So, at this section, the bending moment is maximum. So, the sigma bending, it is actually the maximum one and that will be f cos theta m y by i, right? So, I will write that m, so m is what? This into L, right? m into y by i. Now, okay, so this will be i by y max or we know that this is called the section modulus, right, f cos theta l by z. So, I am taking z as our section modulus, okay. So, z is what? z is i by y max. We all know that how to find this y max. So, let me I uh, cleared you that they will ask everything. They will see that if you know that how can you measure this y. They will, uh, they will actually tell you that okay, you take a square cross section having a height or having a side length as b. Now you tell us that what will be your y max. So you have to tell them, like I said, this is our neutral axis coinciding with the centroidal plane and this will be our y max and if it is a square one then our y max will be b by 2 okay then they will ask you that why this na will uh, coincide with the centroidal plane that you have to answer that. okay that what are the assumptions based on which this na will be coinciding with the centroidal plane you will and what is the assumptions that is the net force on this phase is zero actually so, wherever this neutral axis is, based on the definition of the neutral axis, we know that the fibers above the neutral axis will be in uh, tension and the fibers below the neutral axis will be in compression or the vice versa case will occur. Now, that means the forces above the neutral axis, they will cancel out the forces below the neutral axis. And if you now do this thing, that is F dy, Okay, or F D A and D A will be what? D A will be this is your width and this is given as B. So B into D Y and this is from 0 to Y. Okay. Now if you do it and if you put this value of F from your basic beam theory, so this F will be what? F will be stress into area, right? So by that thing, uh, you will you will be able to find this. Okay. So this can be uh, easily shown that the uh, position of the central axis or the position of the neutral axis that will have that will satisfy this criteria 
that x dA 0 to y that is equal to 0. And actually this dy, this dy is what? This dy is, if you take from this neutral axis, this is your dy, okay, this is your dy. And also the moment will be also 0, right? Uh, will the moment be 0? No, the, the moment will not be 0 at any, uh, I mean, cross section. So that will be there, okay. So from this, you can uh, easily actually show, okay. So this f will be some moment into x, okay, and this is already dA, okay. So I'm not going very deep into this, okay. But this is the assumption that because we are assuming that at any surface, at any cross-sectional area, our net force is zero, okay? Now, so these things I am uh, telling you because they can ask you anything and everything, okay? Okay, so now we have the sigma T and sigma B max, okay? So the net sigma is, sigma is equal to sigma T plus sigma b max and this is a function of time. Sigma t is what? F sin theta, okay, by a, right? F sin theta by a and this will be what? F cos theta l by se section modulus z, okay. So now this theta is a function of time. That means I will be having a sigma max, and the sigma mean and in between this load will vary. Now they will ask you further that can you tell me that at which position, at which position we will be getting the maximum amount of load? Now pause the video and think by yourself. I know that 99.9999999% of, of you will say that okay, one extremum will be here, one extremum load will be here, and one extremum load will be here. Are you sure about that? Let us see. Okay, so the sigma max will depend on the max of sine theta and cos theta. Okay, and actually not not also that. Okay, so this will be equal to if I take the f common, then it is sine theta by a plus cos theta by z by l. So you have to maximize this quantity. Now you cannot directly tell that this quantity will be maximum at this position and this position. So what you have to do? See, this is an expression like this. It is a sin theta plus b cos theta. Now I hope that you know that this, this has a maximum value of root over of a square plus b square. The two extremums are plus and minus of this, okay? And we can also find the theta, okay? Tan inverse d by a. So these things are basic mathematics. So by that thing, you have to find the maximum theta. You don't have to do, the, do all the mathematics. If you just write these things, they will understand during the interview, okay? So the moment you know the sigma max and sigma mean, now, from the knowledge of your machine design, you know that you have to apply the fatigue load failure things, okay. Now, you have to apply the fatigue loading, okay, fatigue design, okay, so fatigue stress design, okay. After that, you can tell them that I have so many lines or criteria like Soderberg, okay. So, and they will, they may ask you that draw the graphs and all, sigma mean and sigma amplitude. So, this will be sigma endurance, this will be sigma y and sigma uts. And they will, then they will ask you to draw the graphs. So, this will be for the Schro uh, Schroederberg line, this, this will be the uh, Goodman, then this will be Jarvers. Okay, so you have to draw all the things. Okay. Now they will ask you that why to choose which criteria, okay? You can tell them that we, that we choose the modified Goodman one because that is the most economic and also very safe criteria, okay? Then they will ask you that how can we design that? So if 
you choose one criteria, shoulder verb. Okay. Then you have this a sigma mean by sigma y plus, sorry, sigma uts. Okay. Plus sigma amplitude by sigma e that is equal to your 1y factor of safety. Then they can go to you that, that why to choose factor of safety. Okay. So all these things they can ask you. Clear? So why to choose factor of safety? Now think. That I can have two options. Either I can take a larger material, okay, to be safe, I will not take any factor of safety, but I will take a very larger material. And, or I will take more harder, I mean, a factor, a, a, a higher factor of safety will actually make the material, I mean, material uh, dimensions more large, okay. But they will tell you, no, I will choose a very hard material. I mean, I will choose a material which has very superior quality in terms of strength. So, why do you try to choose factor of safety? Now, you can tell that that will not be economic because if I have to choose very hard material, then either it will be very brittle or if I have to enhance its properties so much, then that will not be economic. So, I have to be economic. So, there is a trade-off, right? So, this much the answer is complete that you have to now you can always uh, put the things, the value sigma, sigma m and sigma m. How to find sigma m is equal to sigma max plus sigma mean by 2 and sigma amplitude is equal to sigma max minus sigma mean by 2. So these are basic machine design. Now they can tell you that choose a material. What material will you choose? Steel. Why steel? Why not copper? Why not aluminium? Okay, and why not cast iron? You have to answer all these things. So you have to think like an engineer that why to choose this, not that. Okay, you have to think like an engineer. Okay, so this th so this is the, uh, I mean, lesson from this kind of questions that you have to think very clearly there. Okay, very logically. And I mean, I cannot say that what they will exactly ask. They, they can ask anything and everything. Again and again, I am just telling you. Okay. So now finally, I will ask you a question and I will give the answer in the uh, YouTube uh, comments that if I have a beam cross section. Now I have two options. One option is I will cut this much area. I will cut this much area. Okay. So you tell me that, okay, so this is case A, okay, and if I have the same beam, okay, so copy this. Now, I don't have the same beam, but, the, but this beam is also a hollow beam, okay, this beam is also a hollow beam, but now this area, this area is same as the solid one they have the same area. So, there is my case B and this is my case C. So, case C, this beam is having an area of A. This is a solid beam. Okay, solid, solid. Now, this is a hollow beam, but this is also having the same area A. And here, here for case A, this area, this, this, this is, this A is also a hollow beam, but this area is same as this A, this, this total area. Out of this total area, I have taken out this much part. Now, you have to arrange the beams in the order of their strength, in ascending order of the strength. Okay. So, sigma C, sigma B, sigma A. Okay. Which one will be the maximum one? Okay. I mean, the strongest beam will have the less strength, stress. The strongest beam will have the least amount of bending stress, okay, at the same loading uh, conditions. So, either you arrange these stresses, these bending stresses, or you arrange in the order of strength, okay. So, in this video, itna bahut ho gaya, kafi hai. If you think that this guy is doing something for you, please subscribe, share, and like for a motivation. And I will make more videos like this. And all the best for your BRC examination and interview.
ओके गुड बाय टेक केयर एंड थैंक